It's good to be back here in Nagonisi, and of course the timing is, is very good. Um, it's the moment where a new government takes office. Congratulations, Minister Stikuras, for your appointment. Um, um, we are looking forward to very good um, cooperation, constructive cooperation over the next um, few years. Um, and um, with you and the new government, and our meeting yesterday was a good start in that respect. Greece matters for us at the ESM because we see ourselves as a long-term partner. It is our priority that Greece gets back onto a path of strong, long-term growth and sustainable debt. And this is not only because the ESM is the largest creditor of Greece. Our loans run more than 40 years. I think this is also what the Greek citizens um, deserve. I believe we can all embrace this goal, sustainable long-term growth looking forward. The Greek people experienced many years of hardship and had sometimes very painful reforms in their everyday lives. We are fully aware of that and should not forget that. But as a result of the reforms, Greece today is in a much better situation than at the beginning of the crisis. Real GDP is projected to grow a bit more than 2% this year and next. Um, Greece has a substantial cash buffer, which is reassuring. Unemployment is falling, and interest rates in the secondary market are at an all-time low. Fiscal targets have been met over the last four years. This is good news. The targets have even been exceeded. The general government primary balance in program terms last year registered a surplus of 4.3%, strongly overperforming the fiscal target of 3.5% of GDP. Any fiscal space should now use, be used, in my view, for growth-friendly measures, including tax cuts and productive investment. Last August, Greece exited its ESM program after eight years of economic adjustment. Greece implemented substantial and painful reforms to restore the sustainability of public finances, strengthen the banking sector's resilience, and improve the economy's competitiveness. In total, Greece received almost 290 billion euro in financial support, of which 205 billion euro came from the EFSF and ESM. On top of that, there has been extensive debt relief. The ESM offers extremely favorable loan conditions with long maturities and low interest rates. Essentially, we pass on the financial benefit from our high creditworthiness to borrowing member states. In addition, the ESM granted long grace periods to, grow, to Greece. For example, the maximum weighted average maturity of our loans was extended to 42 years, and interest and principal repayments were deferred by 20 years. We estimate that these favorable lending conditions of the EFSF and DSM, compared to hypothetical market financing, save the Greek budget 13 billion euro every year, 13 billion euro, that is around 7% of GDP, and this happens every year. So I think the finance minister is very happy that these savings exist because they can be used for growth-enhancing expenditures or tax cuts. Turning from the present to the future, this leads me to the title of the session, Greece's economy fulfilling expectations after the elections. Clearly, a new government brings the opportunity 
to present new priorities. In this sense, the reform drive of the new government to stimulate the business environment and investment climate is welcome. The finance minister just talked about that. Although the government has just been elected and details remain to be seen, what is currently known seems prom promising to the extent that the country also respects the established surveillance framework and its program commitments. Let me outline some of the policy orientations that I consider to be of particular importance going forward. I believe Greece should make growth its top priority while at the same time maintaining the agreed fiscal framework and fostering fairness across society. The fiscal surplus is, together with growth, the necessary condition for debt sustainability. Given this overarching objective of promoting growth, I would like to advocate the following four more detailed policy lines. First, on structural reforms, these reform, the reforms already implemented during the last few years, such as labor market reforms, should not be reversed. For example, increases in the minimum wage should be aligned with productivity to maintain competitiveness. Further structural reforms are necessary to improve productivity and competitiveness. This is particularly important given the poor demographic outlook for Greece, like for many other European countries. To strengthen productivity requires reforms that make the economic environment more business friendly, reduce the time needed to resolve legal disputes, and further improve the effectiveness of the public administration. Second, the government should, and I am sure will, continue with privatizations and improve the management of state assets. This is critical to building an effective corporate governance culture in Greece and to attract both foreign and domestic investment. Third point on banks, and here I will be short because my neighbor, Pavlov Milonas will talk more on that, but it's important that the resilience of the banking sector is maintained, safeguarded, strengthened in order to improve financial conditions and support growth. Greece needs a stable and profitable banking sector to support firms and households. And fourth, last but not least, on fiscal policies, any rebalancing of fiscal policies should be targeted to foster growth while safeguarding the achievement of the agreed fiscal framework. A reduction in tax rates, for example, could be coupled with a broader tax base. Also, available fiscal room should be used for productive expenditures, in particular public investment. More broadly, policy measures should consider fairness across society. For example, social benefits should be targeted at the most disadvantaged, where the risk of poverty is high. During the last months, concerns related to structural reforms and fiscal policies have been voiced also by the ESM. The Commission presented the third enhanced surveillance report last month, which assesses the ongoing implementation of reforms. The ESM agrees with the conclusions in that report that reform implementation has slowed in recent months and the consistency of some policy measures with commitments given to the European partners is not assured. Some of these decisions are likely to have negative consequences on growth, backtracking on past reforms and increasing spending while arrears are still higher than expected. To support growth and debt sustainability, the commitment to stick to the agreed reform path beyond the end of the program is essential. 
and therefore I welcome what the Minister told us a few minutes ago um, about the reform intention and I'm looking forward to good cooperation to understand better the details of your reform agenda um, and I take it as very positive that there's a renewed commitment of close cooperation with the European partners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just for clarity's sake, could I understand that what you talked about just a moment ago about the certain backtracking on the progress and reform, you're talking about the, um, what, what happened under the previous government towards the end of its tenure, not about something that's happened under this government. So, Of course, because so that's where our decision So you're hoping for a, for a, for a reversion back to a, a vigorous implementation of reform, is that right? Yeah, the backtracking happened the last two or three months. And, and what specifically were the, were, the, were the signs of that that you detected that concerned you? Was certain decisions were taken that were clearly in breach of earlier commitments. Um, and they happened without consultation that related to um, the increase in pension payments, some labor market um, reforms. Um, also, the way the fiscal space that existed was used. I'm also not happy with the way the fiscal space was generated because it mainly appeared because of underspending of the investment budget. So all that, and that's our yardstick. We are not debating individual policy measures. Our yardstick is always what is good for long-term growth. Yes. And that's against um, which we measure um, all decisions taken and policy intentions for the future. Uh, and more broadly, on the question of the governance of Greece, Greece being in this ob situation where it has to uh, have these regular consultations with you where it is very closely monitored, how do you expect that process to work and how long does that process need to go on for, the, before Greece comes out of, and, and becomes, in effect, fully normalized and no longer having to undergo what some would regard as a you know, slightly humiliating process for a, a, a national government? I think that's completely the wrong perspective. Okay. This is not a humiliating process, not at all. All countries that are members of the monetary union and use the euro are together under a close policy surveillance framework. This applies to all countries um, that are members of the euro area. And it's very different for countries that are not in the euro area, that may be in the EU, like Sweden, um, they are much freer. We have policy frameworks, not only on the fiscal side, also on other, in other policy areas. We have a macroeconomic imbalance procedure that was created after the crisis in order to detect problems early on. I think all that is good and applies to all Euro area countries. In addition, countries that borrowed from the EFSF and ESM are under special um, arrangements as long as these loans are outstanding. So this applies to five countries. So five countries that borrowed from the EFSF and ESM, that's not only Greece, it's also Spain, Portugal, Ireland and Greece. And we go there on a regular basis until the money has been fully repaid. I think that's very normal for a large creditor to check what's happening in the country. It's very different from being under a program, um, but it is also um, necessary because the ESM wants to be repaid one day. We are a very patient creditor, particularly in the case of Greece, because the last payment is only due in the year 2070. So, so, so the average maturity is 42 years, but the last payment in 2070. In addition, Greece has received debt relief, which other countries have not. And Greece continues to be entitled to receive additional debt relief. There are these technical terms, SMP, unfair profit, step up interest margin. Um, not everybody needs to understand it, but it means extra money is potentially available. And that also, um, I think, um, justifies um, a higher degree of monitoring what's going on, whether commitments are, are um, continue to be honored or not because these 
requires decisions by the Eurogroup every six months whether this additional debt relief should be released. It will help Greece greatly. Nothing to do with humiliation. Um, but it it really mean, helps it the economy. That, that, uh, the implication of what you say is that for another half a century, more or less, uh, other things being equal, you and your successors will be involved and in, engaged in this sort of monitoring process. That's uh, correct, in a very productive, constructive way. Greece is no longer under a program, there's no conditionality, um, but there will be a constructive dialogue um, on a regular basis, like between any creditor and debtor, um, whether it's in the private or in the public sector.